Integer overflow and underflow vulnerabilities, what are they? Well, it's when signed and unsigned numbers exceed their available positive or negative ranges due to acid math. You're going to come to hate acid math in this class. So just a quick refresher of two's complement numbering system. One's complement is the notion of you take a value and you flip all the bits, and two's complement is one's complement, so flip all the bits and add one to that. In C, signed types, meaning things that can take on a positive and negative value, are represented as two's complement values, where basically, effectively, half the range is available for positive and half for negative. So, for instance, if we had an 8-bit value, like a char, the available values are, you know, binary 8-bit 0, 0, 0 to all 1s, hex 0, 0 to all Fs, and unsigned decimal 1, uh, sorry, 0 up through 255. So when it's an unsigned 8-bit number, these values are all positive, 0 to 255. If, on the other hand, it is a signed 8-bit number, then you have 0, and it goes 1 to 127, and then it loops around and all of a sudden becomes negative 128, negative 127, 126, etc., down to negative 1. So basically, like I said, we have effectively half the range positive, half the range negative. It can't exactly be half because you've got zero here. But, uh, but yeah, so that is kind of the thing that gets people is this notion of you just keep increasing the values and all of a sudden when you're halfway through the range, then it immediately flips over to negative values instead of positive values. So also I just point out that uh, all the negative values have the most significant bit set to one. So that is why that is sometimes called the sign bit, because basically in two's complement system, if the most significant bit is one, then that's gonna be a negative value. And if the most significant bit is zero, it's a positive value or it's zero. And so the exact same principles apply if we were looking at 32-bit values or 64-bit values. It's just all zeros, all zero and a one, all zero, one, zero, et cetera, zero, one, two, three, and then up to seven FFE, seven FFF, and that's the last positive value, 2 billion something, and then it flips around and becomes negative 2 billion something, and then negative 2 billion something minus 1, etc., all the way up to negative 1, right? So this is a thing that ultimately causes all sorts of problems for code uh, be when things, you know, either A, overflow because they got so high that they got up to FF and then they loop back around, or B, due to crossing the boundary between positive and negative values. So like I said, you're going to learn to fear acid math in this class because acid math is as bad as an acid bath. So here we go, acid, math, so pot, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and, and uh, shifting to the left, which is equivalent to multiplication. All those sort of uh, arithmetic operations on acid lead to a bad time. Acid math, acid bath, and you did. And if that weren't enough, let us recall the travails of Alien vs. Predator to remind us that an acid bath is not a good time. So, integer overflows, how exactly does this manifest and why is it a security problem? Well, let's say we have some stupid trivial code like this, unsigned char i equals zero, and then an infinite loop doing i++. plus plus. So, i starts at zero, plus plus it's one, plus plus it's two, and it just keeps going until it eventually gets to 254, 255, and then if you do this math, all ones plus one, well, the result is one and eight zeros, but you've only got eight bits to use for storage of this value. So this most significant one just gets dropped, truncated, and then effectively it becomes all zeros and it wraps back around from the maximum positive number down to zero. And boom, that was an integer overflow. Then you have signed values. So you can start with zero and move your way through the available values till you get up to 127. And when you cross that boundary into negative 128, boom, that's an integer overflow. And then you just keep adding and adding and adding and you're at negative one. And then you add plus one and you're back up to zero. Boom, that's an integer overflow. Now I'm just making a big deal about those integer overflows because that's gonna go into the trailer. So I was searching for some, you know, elementary school notion of under and over, and I came with this picture, liked it a lot, because basically integer overflows will manifest themselves as vulnerabilities due to under allocation and over copying. 
So I found this picture, liked it, especially because the picture reminds you that you need to listen to your teacher and look at the pictures. That's what I want out of you in this class. Listen to the teacher and look at the pictures. So for instance, if we have a big number plus a constant, two big numbers added together, big number times a constant, well, that is acid math. And acid math is as bad as an acid bath. So this integer overflowing in the context of the allocation means that a big number is going to become a small number. That's going to lead to under allocation. And if the big number is subsequently used for a mem copy without realizing that it had underflowed the memory allocation, then that is an over copy. Under allocation, over copy. And this tends to happen quite a bit in code all thanks to acid math. So this time the trivial example is not so trivial just because you know I wanted to show a little bit more of like you know how this might manifest itself in the real world. So we've got our attacker controlled inputs of argv. We've got you know some notion of like a header that goes on a data structure. And the header has some you know magic number in it that says like this is what type of header I am and it's got a size of saying you know here's the data that I expect to have after my header. So you'd expect you know, some sort of buffer allocation, tax the header at the beginning, and then puts however much size after that header. So, okay, what happens here? Well, we've got you know, a constant number going to magic. That's fine, that's not attacker controlled. We've got argv of one going into string two unsigned long. Well, that is attacker controlled, and that means attacker controlled value is gonna come out of that and catch header.size on fire. Then we have this hard-coded size of my header plus the attacker controlled value. And what is that? That is acid math. And that's as bad as an acid bath. All right, so acid math here, if the attacker could cause this to be an extremely large value, right? What is header.size? It's an unsigned long int. So if this is an extremely large value coming in here, then that plus header size, whatever header size is, let's say it's eight. If header size plus that overflows, integer overflows, then alloc size will be a small value instead of a large value. Then that will boom, 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 be handed into malloc. So allocation size could be small instead of big, even though the intention is that this header size is big, like there should be a big amount of data after the end of the you know, header on this allocation. But unfortunately, it's under allocated, and we'll see later if there's an over copy. But allocation small, allocates this buffer, and this is going to be explicitly an under allocation, which I'm going to show this way with a little bit of like a, an under, like push down, shading, whatever. All right, so the under allocated buffer, check if it's null, no it's not. All right, and then print out the pointer of address. Now we've got a mem copy, and it's copying size of my header. Well, that's not an attacker controlled value. And it's copying from header, which is, you know, semi attacker controlled only in the sense of you know, size is attacker controlled and magic is not. Probably should have drawn that on here, but we'll just remember that for now. And that's going into buff. Well, that is an okay mem copy that is not buffer overflowing. So it's only just copying eight bytes into the buffer. Well, actually, I guess it could technically overflow. Depends on the values, as you'll see later. All right, so then uh, the buff pointer is moved forward via the size of, uh, by the total size of my header. Okay, so now buff is not pointing at the beginning of the buffer, but some offset into the buffer. If that were an attacker-controlled value, we would be worried about, you know, potential out-of-bound write type vulnerabilities at this point. But then, you know, print out, you know, the allocation sizes, the attacker-controlled values, and now we're going into a mem copy again. Now we have an attacker-controlled size, which is a large size, presumably, if an attacker was causing a integer overflow at this point. Large size copying from a large or from a attacker controlled uh, buffer, which could be large, could be small, into a purposefully under allocated buffer. Well, that is the kind of thing that should make your splitty sense go off. You've got fully attacker controlled length, fully attacker controlled data, and to boot, you've got a intentionally forced under allocated buffer. So that's gonna cause a problem. Under allocation via integer overflow, and over copy. And this just becomes, you know, a typical heap overflow. So if we run that, we could do, for instance, under allocation over copy. If we say one, saying we want to, you know, have a size of one, and we're gonna copy that. Self-reported size of one allocation is one plus the header size, which is eight, so this is nine. Buffer points wherever it points on the heap. It's mem copying one byte into a buffer of size nine. Great, no problem. And there's the copied string, one byte of W from the what up. 
Then here, what if we say it is hex 10, 16 bytes? So it's going to allocate a total size of 18 and copying 10 bytes into 18, sure, no problem. But what if the attacker provides a size of all Fs, right, 4 billion? Now the reported size is 4 billion and the allocation size is seven. So I said before, you know, when I was thinking about the header, I said, oh, just copying the header in is okay, that's not gonna overflow. Well, the header is eight bytes and we just caused an allocation of seven. So yes, even just the header allocation, even though it's not attacker controlled in terms of the size of the header, it still will actually overflow. And so ultimately, once you get to the big mem copy, which is the FFF bytes into the buffer, that of course is going to completely smash the heap. Now, just as an aside, while I was playing with this, you know, I tried, you know, some smaller values like hex 1000 at one point, and that would actually crash as well. And so I said, copying a thousand bytes into a size of 1008, why is that a problem? There's no integer overflow here. Uh, but, you know, if you look at your memory layout and mind your memory map, uh, you'll see you're copying from RV of one that is pretty close generally to the bottom of the stack, which means it's just going to copy up and ultimately run off the bounds of the stack and hit unmapped memory location. So it's actually unfortunately common that allocators may not be checking for integer overflows themselves. So even if the bug was not in your code, your allocator might be causing an integer overflow. So for instance, normally when you ask for X bytes from an allocator, behind the scenes it may allocate X plus Y bytes in order to create some space for heap metadata that the allocator manages itself. So this X plus Y allocation could actually overflow and ultimately the allocator could uh, allocate too little space. So uh, Microsoft's Azure IoT folks, Internet of Things folks, had um, been looking at a bunch of IoT libraries and they found like a whole bunch of these things were having integer overflows inside the allocation library itself. So they dubbed it bad alloc bugs. Uh, and, you know, they, they pointed it out in a whole bunch of things and led a big, massive uh, coordinated disclosure campaign. But, you know, I've seen these sort of things a whole bunch in code I've looked at as well uh, that had nothing to do with this code that, you know, I'll show you a picture of in a second. So you really have to look in your code and say, okay, now I'm aware of integer overflows. Is my heap allocator going to overflow on me? So from their Black Hat talk from the Azure folks, uh, you know, you can imagine again, you know, you ask for X, X is 1024, malloc allocates eight plus 1024 in order to create some space for metadata. But that eight plus 1024 is acid math and it's as bad as an acid bath. So that could actually overflow because if the amount that was being asked for is again, close to that uh, maximum range, the four billion, then eight plus four billion is seven, just like we saw with the uh, under allocation over copy. Similarly, you can have, you know, things where if the value is, you know, essentially half of the range, you know, a little one, one more than half of the range, then if you have something like calloc, which will do a multiplication behind the scenes, that multiplication can overflow the available range and lead to an under allocation. And that multiplication is acid math, which is as bad as an acid bath. All right, so here's the example that they, you know, drilled down on a little bit. It's from uh, free RTOS. So they had like the PV port malloc, which had the X wanted size is the attack controlled va or value that you know is being asked for as part of the allocation. That value is checked to see if it's greater than zero. And if so, then they take that value and they add heap struct size to it. That is acid math. And furthermore, it just keeps going and there's another you know check for alignment and stuff. And if that's found, then ultimately there's going to be some more acid math and another opportunity to integer overflow. So basically behind the scenes, integer overflows, even if you don't see it in your code itself, it could be happening in the allocator. So here's all of the different vendors, you know, that they were involved in this disclosure, you know, Amazon Free RTOS, BlackBerry Qnix, uh, what else we got, Red Hat, Newlib, Riot OS, all sorts of things, Texas Instruments, Wind River VxWorks, whole bunch of things had this sort of vulnerability. And again, from my experience, I've seen this a lot in a lot of code as well. Anytime someone goes off and decides to make their own new custom allocator, uh, it leads to sort of, if an allocator had already been hardened against heap overflows, the new allocator tends to not be hardened. If it had already been hardened against integer overflows, it tends to not be hardened. 
So this is something that you should definitely check into. And while we're on the topic of allocators, if you do go digging around in your allocator, I'd like to point out that you should just say no to zero. So when you have these integer overflows, it turns out that some allocators are just happy to allocate a zero sized buffer. If an allocator hands you back a pointer to a zero sized buffer, you are guaranteed heap overflowing that buffer, right? If you ever try to write any data into it. So when you're looking, go look for zero size allocations being an acceptable thing and disallow it because integer overflows could lead to a value of zero and subsequently this is going to guarantee heap overflow. And here's the citations of that Microsoft work that'll be on the webpage. All right, well, we've talked a lot about integer overflows. Now let's talk about integer underflows. What is it? Well, let's have our same dumb code that sets i equal to zero and now infinitely de decrements the value and decreases it. Well, you started at zero and you know you can't really subtract one from zero, so you need to borrow a one. And so one, zero, 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 zero minus one is all ones. And that means you loop back around from being zero up to being the maximum possible value. That is an integer underflow. Boom, integer underflow. All right, and you just keep decrementing, 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 and once again, loop around integer underflow. In the context of sign values, same thing, loop around, boom, integer underflow. And decrementing, decrementing, and once you cross this negative to positive boundary, boom, integer underflow. And of course, you just keep decrementing it again. It's an integer underflow once you cross over from zero back to negative values. Right, so integer underflows, you know, you're, you're moving down in values and you're crossing, you know, from positive values or zero values into negative or crossing from negative into positive. That is an integer underflow. So how can an integer underflow lead to a security vulnerability? Well, the underflow leads to a value going from being small to being big. So if that value is used, for instance, as a size to copy, then that could lead to an overcopy. So for instance, if an attacker controls this value and it's being subtracted from some other value, if they can just set it to whatever they want, then they can make sure that it's bigger than the small value and that will subsequently underflow, leading to a large size, right? And that's acid math. On the other hand, if the attacker controls this value and there's some you know, constant or some other value being uh, subtracted from the attacker controlled value, then they just need to set this to being smaller than that and subsequently it will once again underflow leading to a large attacker controlled size value. And if that size is used in a mem copy, that's gonna be an over copy. So let's go look at some real examples of this now. 